Hello everyone, it's Thursday, February 16th. We're here at SeaWorld Orlando for a really special event. We just got our jeans on, we're all ready to go. We're gonna check out the surf coaster. We have a special behind the scenes tour, construction hard hat tour of this coaster. I'm very excited. Well, we've been showing you a lot of updates. This thing is gonna get ready to test soon, but we're about to head in. So we're about to head into it. We're checking in, getting our uh, vest and our hard hats ready, but I can't wait for this. So we got our hard hat now and our vest and our goggles. We're gonna put everything on. So yeah, we're all suited up. We have our hard hat with the stickers. We have our safety goggles and our vest. We're just waiting to get a nice tour inside the facility. I cannot wait. Hi, um, first and foremost, welcome. Thank you guys for taking time out of your busy schedules to come today. We're really excited to share the progress that I find the surf poster is taking. Um, we are expected, as you all know, to open spring of this year. We do not have a date yet, so I did want to preface that, that unfortunately any timeline questions that you might have, we are still just very much pushing that we are opening spring, but you're going to see the amazing progress that the engineering team, design and engineering team here at SeaWorld has been doing. And um, so with that being said, I know you all have your hard hats, your vest, your protective eyewear. Um, Remember, this is an active construction site, so please just be very careful where you're stepping, pay attention to, to your surroundings, um, but capture as much as you can. We do ask that everybody stays together amongst the group. We do have mics inside, so you will be able to hear. Um, Clint is going to be leading the tour, and he's from our design and engineering team, so he'll be able to give you all of the updates and everything that's going on. Um, and then at the end of the tour, we will be um, having you guys do any one-on-one -on -one interviews have questions and all of that good stuff, so we'll take care of that at the end. Um, and just just forewarning, I know these are amazing, but we are going to need these back at the end. <laughs> so, with that being said, I'm going to turn this over to Clint and enjoy. All right. <laughs> so, just a quick introduction. Hi, my name is Clint Breaker. I'm the VP of Design Engineering here for the Sewer Orlando Parks. Uh, just a reminder, this is an active construction site. Most of the workers are out for the day. Uh, however, you know, just knowing where you are in your environment, being aware of your surroundings, and also uh, mindful of your steps. So please watch your step throughout the site. There's a lot of loose dirt. You have leveled out for you to try to make it easy. I know some of you have gears. You're not always able to look where you're going. So please, please, please be safe. So with that said, if you will follow me, we'll head over to the site. Thank you. So we have now entered the site. Heading right under a piece of track here. It's really neat looking. We're gonna be getting a lot of photos from the site as well. Look at that. We have the train on the track, hopefully for some push pull testing very soon. You guys, if you go straight down where you see the coaster park, we're so going down that way. Amazing. That is the brake run right there. And then the station is directly in front of us. They have a test seat over there. Lots of really neat stuff on the site. All right, everyone, I see you making your way. This is an exciting moment. This is the same Our train that was on display at the front of the if park you will as well. gather uh, between me and the fence over here, get a good view of the car behind me. And we will stop to have a moment for photos, so you don't have to get all those photos right now. All right. Would have been great if we had a perfectly quiet site, but uh, got to tell you, we're working pretty fast here, so couldn't, uh, couldn't knock everybody out for the day just yet. Some nice BGM, a little more authentic. Thank you. Yep. yep. All right, you've arrived. So, welcome to Pipeline the Surf Coaster. This is a first of its kind surf coaster experience we'll get a genuine feeling of surfing on 2,950 feet of track. Now along that 110 second journey, you'll experience five airtime wave jumping moments. 
And to my right, you'll see the first car of our two trains. We have two trains in our maintenance bay here. Knew it. And each, uh, each train has six cars with up to four passengers. This is a really unique uh, and great train design because there is no middle row. So every rider will get that full surf experience as we go. And as you've probably seen by now from the animations that we've released and things like that, uh, this ride is uh, patented, first of its kind design, where you actually are, are standing, but it's not like any standing coaster you've ever experienced before. You'll have some floating motion that's relative to the, the rider's height, and our minimum height is 54 inches for this ride. And that'll give each rider a unique experience where that floating will be slightly different every time you ride throughout those airtime moments. And at the end of our journey, you'll have an opportunity to check out our test seat. We won't be putting the harness on, but you will be able to you know, touch and feel and see all the cool stuff about it. So at this time, I'm giving everyone an opportunity to get photos of the, the car up on the track, and then we'll walk to our next stop. Thank you. So yeah, this is the car up front, like I said before, same one that we saw on the display in the front of the park and at Iapa. It looks really neat. I can't wait to be on those trains. All right, Heading over going. to the next stop. All right, everybody, if you can, uh, I'll be here at the front if you guys can fill in ahead of me back towards the, the lift over there. It's a great moment you're seeing the magic happen right in front of you. All right, friends, I think we're almost there. Awesome. All right, so here we are. So our next stop, we're gonna focus on all the things you see around the ride. So to my right over here, you see the lifeguard tower at the station, and that's reminiscent of the, the lifeguard towers you see in Southern California beaches. As you exit the ride, you'll see the high surf gift shop. I know many of you knew that hashtag was in, in the uh, media, and that was actually the name of our, our gift shop here. So as you exit through the gift shop, this is where you can do your uh, ride photo redemption. Uh, for your souvenir cups, we'll have a Coke Freestyle re refill station. You can get all your favorite SeaWorld and surf gear here. Now talking about the ride, you launch out of the station immediately with an airtime moment at up to 60 miles an hour, where you'll go over our hammerhead wave turn at 110 feet, all the way in the back. And you'll car left and right as you plunge down into our water feature here, which will splash up with lighting and fun effects as you curl right into our, our, uh, our one inversion here at the wave curl. After that, we'll have cutbacks making figure eights all the way back to the station. And again, that's a 110 second ride experience. So five airtime moments as you float over this track, it's gonna be an incredible experience. And I'll give you a moment here to take some more photos. We'll, uh, I'll back up just a little bit so you have a little more freedom to get some different angles. And then we'll move over to the next stop in just a few minutes. Thank you. So this right over here is the water feature that they're working on. As you can see, everything's kind of exposed right now as they're still working on the feature. I cannot wait to see this thing actually work when it opens. And then you head straight from there into the inversion, which looks amazing from this angle. And as you can see, there's lots of employees on the site working really hard and fast to get this project open really soon. This is where you'll redeem your on-ride photos, get some cool merchandise for the surf coaster, and then they're even gonna have a refill station for your uh, freestyle cups and stuff. But yeah, I'm just getting some photos, some videos over here, and then we're gonna go on to the next area. This right there is the launch that's gonna launch you 60 miles an hour into that hammerhead turn. And they even got a boom lift over there. And they are really working on this. So he just said this is going to be the walking path you take from the Flamecraft Grill, which is where we connect to the bridge, but this pathway will be open once the attraction is, so you will get the same views that I'm getting right now once the attraction officially opens. I'm here for you, We're heading back in this direction right now. I think we're about to talk about the inversion here. Or maybe not. We actually have a paved path this way, so they're actually working really hard to get some of the walkway 
already carved out. And yeah, that's where the it's gonna go after the inversion. They got some trim brakes set up over there. And yeah, I can't wait. Now we're heading into the pavilion, which has a test seat for the attraction. And I believe this pavilion will be up when the attraction officially does open. We also have some concept art over here of what it's gonna look like when the attraction opens. Just raise your hand, I'll make sure to raise my voice. I think we got everybody. Right. Awesome. So with everyone here, I'll go ahead. So this is our last stop on the, uh, the site tour, your hard hat tour for today. As you can see to my right, this is the site. Uh, it's a great graphic that shows you a, a very realistic view of what you'll see when we open here very soon. Um, you can see. Uh, a lot of our key points, launching out at 60 miles per hour, the height of that hammerhead wave being 110 feet, and the track length of 2950, 2950 feet is listed there. Now the big dance here is the test seats. This is your opportunity uh, for everyone to you know, get your picture with it, touch it. Unfortunately, uh, because it has to be actuated, uh, we won't be able to open and close it for anyone today. But I did want to talk you through a little bit of how it works. So it's an overhead restraint, so this comes up and down. And what you see here is that the, the rider will come inside, straddling this piece right here, pull the restraint down, and then the ride is personalized to your height. So you'll stand in your, your neutral, natural position, and our operators will set the ride to your height, and that will give you a little bit of up and down free motion as you ride the ride. So it is a genuinely personal experience for each rider based on your uh, height. So it's a really great opportunity. I think this is going to be something that everyone will never forget and want to ride again and again. So I'll, I'll give you this time if you can. Uh, have some pictures here. We'll be over to the side. My colleague Jeff Morning, who's our Vice President uh, at Corporate Attraction Development, he'll be over here with me and will be available for any questions you have. Thank you all so much for being here. So yeah, now we're walking on the path here. My hat's falling off. We cannot keep any of the hats today, but basically, um, the test seat, we cannot go in it at the moment, but it will kind of lock to your height once you sit in it And then it will give a little bit of range of motion for everyone once they're locked in the seat So everyone should be able to have a little room to go up and down with the seat But it will lock to your height at first and yeah, it's not actuated at the moment so once the uh, The ride starts getting closer to opening once this land opens they will have the test seat in operation And here's some more views from this area some sharp turns with the netting in place. Like that little spot over there, which goes right by the stadium. And that's the inversion right there. There's that little turnaround over here. And yeah, this looks amazing. We came in from under the track over there, but this turn looks really cool. The brake runs straight ahead. And then you have another cool uh, helix over there. And then yeah, this path looks amazing. As you can see right now, they got a boom lift by the netting area. They're making sure all the nets are in place just for guest safety. So if there's any loose articles in the ride that they don't fly off and hit the guests. And yeah, these trim brakes look interesting. I'm, I'm tempted to see, can't wait to see how they affect the vehicle when testing to see like how it slows it down and stuff. But yeah, that's where we saw a lot of employees in our last video. Um, they're all on the site, but yeah. We have another boom lift straight ahead doing more netting and stuff. And yeah, here's a clear view of the gift shop and lockers and stuff. The station looks amazing for the train and everything. I cannot wait. This thing, we have a footer here. Some markings on it. This thing looks amazing. Okay, we're about to interview one of the people, one of the lead engineers of the ride. I can't wait to hear what he had to say. Give us some more information for you guys. So you're more prepared when you visit this new coaster opening this spring. Yep. Nice to meet you. You are? Ethan Hershaft. From? The Orlando Tourist. All right. Yeah, nice, nice to meet, to meet you. You. Yeah. you a big roller coaster guy? Oh, yeah. I've done all the SeaWorld ones. All Pretty much every new coaster in Orlando, we've done them all. What's your favorite one? Favorite Orlando? one? I'm going to have to go with Iron Gwazi. All right. That one's there, pretty high up on my oh, list. Oh, yeah. Too. Number have, one. Have you been on Pantheon in Williamsburg? I have not. The only out-of-state park I've been to is Universal Hollywood, so, okay. yeah. All right. Well, you're going to have to get you over there then to check that Definitely. one out. Definitely. I'm excited for that, yeah. yeah. 
And you got Dark Coaster opening up over there. We have Dark Coaster opening up, yeah, later this oh, yeah. year. So that is going to be a fantastic new attraction that's open at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. We're really excited about that ride. It's going to be a very uh, dynamic experience and mm -hmm. the uh, story overlay for that and uh, the homage that we're playing to the former Dark Castle experience mm -hmm. is one that our guests are sure to enjoy. All right, now can we go a little more in depth about some of the unique features of this ride that guests can, um, that may not, they, they might not be expecting when they arrive? We're really excited to, to invite media and give this hard hat tour of the Pipeline Surf Coaster here at SeaWorld Orlando. We've been working on this coaster attraction for a number of years in design, development, construction. And as you can see, we've hit a, a fantastic milestone of all of the steel being in place. Uh, very shortly, we're gonna start cycling the ride and, and setting up for that commissioning milestone for the attraction. As we develop this roller coaster, we've worked through the choreography of the ride to really enhance the dynamic restraint system that's featured on this surf coaster experience. You get to really hug the curves and all those elements. We've got lots of left and right ch transitions, changes in direction, lots of the figure eight motions, as well as up and down. We even have uh, an inversion, our wave cool inversion, and we have five airtime moments on the ride. This ride is nearly two minutes in length, so it's gonna be a very exciting, thrilling ride, all the way from the first dynamic launch to the very end. Now, what is one of the reasons you think this coaster is gonna stand out compared to other coasters in Orlando and draw people to ride it? Pipeline is the seventh roller coaster here at SeaWorld Orlando, and it is a fantastic complement to the other world-class coasters that we have here. What's going to set this apart is that this is the world's first surf coaster. There's unlike anything like this experience out there. This ride and its location in the park is a perfect fit for the SeaWorld park theme. It really hits very, uh, very well with our, our ocean conservation messaging as well. Um, and just knowing the surf coaster out, the surf culture is, uh, is all about the, the saving of the oceans and the conservation associated with that. So having all of those elements incorporated into the ride experience and the fact that it is right on the front doorstep of, of the park, even the non-riders are going to enjoy the, the pipeline experience, the energy that they're going to get. We've actually incorporated a lot of the pathways in and amongst this ride steel, so you're going to have the ride going up and over the pathway. So even if you're not a big coaster fan, you'll still enjoy all the excitement and energy that Pipeline will bring to this new area of the park. Definitely. And lastly, um, I know you said, mentioned that uh, SeaWorld's the coaster capital of Orlando. Can we expect some more additions in the near future to definitely grow that title even more? We are always looking for the next latest greatest attraction here at SeaWorld Orlando. Whether that's a world close roller coaster, amazing entertainment, or even our world class animal collection that we have here. We're always looking and um, speaking with our guests about what's going to be the, the next element that really enhance their, their experience. And I can tell you, we've got some amazing new projects on the, the books and there's a lot more excitement to come. But what I'm most excited about is to bring everyone out here for, for Pipeline that'll open up here this spring. Come hang 10 with you then. All right, there you go. So yeah, that was a great interview one-on-one -on -one, one of, with one of the creative designers of the attraction. We're going to be heading out of the construction site now, get you a, color, uh, a couple other views on the way out over here. Those brakes look amazing, and this turn looks really neat. We are now done with the tour. As you can see, we have a uh, surf coaster train in the maintenance barn over there. That's the back of it. They will have two trains on the ride. We are going to go head to the car now, drop the camera off, and then we'll go in the park with the GoPro, show you they just started their Mardi Gras festival, so we'll show you a little bit of that before we end the vlog here. So yeah, I did not expect to be going into the park after that tour today, but that was an amazing hard hat tour. Right now we're going to check out the Mardi Gras event, which is lasting about two weeks, and that event starts like today. So I'm really excited to check it out. But yeah, thank you so much SeaWorld for inviting us out to that tour. The vlog is not over yet though, we have more to check out. In that interview, he also said that they got some new stuff coming after the surf coaster. You couldn't go into details, but SeaWorld's not done with the new um, attractions. So definitely stay tuned for more new stuff around the park in addition to what we already have being added to the park. So SeaWorld's moving really quick. But yeah, let's head in. Also, um, I do tend to post very late, so this video is probably gonna be posted very late. And if you want the most up-to-date information, definitely follow my social media pages. They can be found in the description below. That's how you find all my most up-to-date uh, up information when I'm at the parks every day. 
I'm not actually at the parks every day, but I'm here a lot. So every time I'm here, you'll see all the brand new updates right away on those pages. I do tend to post late in here. So that's gonna be your quickest place to find them. We're gonna start off the visit by seeing if there's anything new to check out in the self-service ticketing kiosks. That's how you'll find a lot of your pass holder benefits, or you can also go to guest services. Let's go check them out. There's not really anything new at the ticket kiosks, but inside the park, we do have some new stuff, like a new pin series going on, a new pass holder magnet for pipeline. I don't know which ones are actually out today in the park, but we're gonna go find out for you guys. And we have the Mardi Gras parade and stuff like that. And over here in the front of the park, we used to have the pipeline train on display, but as you saw during the tour, we had it on the track. So it's about to start its push pull testing. They're about to move it around the track. And then after that, they're actually gonna do full on ride testing. But yeah, let's head around the park now. We were here the last couple weeks for the opening of Seven Seas Food Festival. We got some free samples, got to try out some food. We also um, got like free samples in our last visit um, because that was one of the pass order benefits. The today, a couple days ago, started the new button series. So we're gonna pick up our free animal button over here in the rescue gift shop. They have a new pass holder donut as well. And later on in the month, we'll get a new um, pipeline magnet as well. And we have a couple Seven Seas performers out, but let's go pick up our pass holder pin or magnet. We'll find out. This is the button. It's uh, every other month they're gonna be doing them. And this one's an Orca one. Yeah, I like this. Some of the other theme parks down the road stopped doing their pass holder benefits, so it's really neat. And you get it here at the rescue center, which is right next to the gift shop as you enter the park. We're gonna check out that pass holder donut now. It's not free, but it is exclusive for like the month of February. And it started just the other day. They started having the, uh, the donut. Let's go see. Yeah, you can actually get it until March 31st. Like, that's the pass holder exclusive. Is that the chai? Yeah, so the magnet comes out on the 20th of February and pretty soon they're gonna have it. So if you buy a Seven Seas lanyard, as a pass holder, you get extra food samples. You get like three extra. We have our food guides over here and these little stands around the park. Those things are very important. And we have the dates for Mardi Gras over here. Hey, Mardi Gras. The 16th through the 26th, um, excluding the 20th and 22nd. We got time throughout the day. And yeah, that's it right there. Starting in a few days, it looks like we can get um, free quick queue after, uh, I believe, six, after 3 p.m. we can get free quick queue. That'll be very soon. Then we have the free sea lion feeding trays every visit. So that already started, we'll get to do that later. And then they've extended the passport to Thrills VIP, which I'll explain soon. During the surf coaster tour, um, they explained how this path will connect to Flamecraft where we were standing. We're not going to show you guys any updates with the surf coaster because we already did that. Um, very in depth, prior most up to date like update for the surf coaster. But that path looks pretty much done. And, you know, it's probably here hard to hear me because we have some live entertainment for the Seven Seas Food Festival, and the Seven Seas Food Festival is going on during the Mardi Gras event. We're not gonna be going very in depth with the Seven Seas Food Festival because we have covered that the last few visits, but they do have concerts typically in the weekend. Today we're strictly mostly covering Mardi Gras. And yeah, I'm excited. I don't think they have any extra Mardi Gras food items, but we have like a new entertainment offering. So let's go check it out. It's also very windy, so it might be a little hard to hear me throughout today's video. We'll probably ride some of the coasters later. This one here, 15 minutes wait for Icebreaker. It doesn't look very long. Probably gonna get copyrighted here, but we got a stage, some performers, and some decorations, and a DJ for the Mardi Gras area. Oh yeah, this looks amazing. They're gonna have the band play on there, a centerpiece. We got everything going on. The new sign up over here.
the dance party over here and that's how you get the beats as well. It looks like you can make Mardi Gras masks over here. So is this for like just creating masks and stuff? Yeah. yeah. You create your own masks. We just got ourselves a Mardi Gras beat from the characters around here. You can't actually get them during the parade, so you gotta go here during the pre-sessions, before the parade, and after the parade. The next one's at 5.30, so it's like 30 minutes from now. We're just waiting for it. Well, it looks like they do actually have some Mardi Gras food options here. You get them at these food booths during the 17th Food Festival. And they also have some drink options as well because you know everyone loves alcohol so we have those as well everyone's still dancing over here i don't know if i showed this to you guys but the bathroom is over here by the uh, uh, wild earth Art Club right now oh, videos and the you gotta use the ones by the orca stadium a decent weight right now the rumor is that they're getting rid of the comfort colors as they're running one train right now yeah, yeah. so we're keeping an eye out and hopefully they'll get rid of that soon they're supposed to add seat belts. let's go ride like mako or something i briefly mentioned earlier but the passport to thrills is in the uh passenger lounge which closes at four every day opens at like 11 or 12. it's like a waterway drone that's where you check in and if you check in three times before the end of this month you can get a free express pass to the new surf coaster. Um, that started back in December, but they keep pushing it back. 
So, um, so far it's gonna end at the end of this month, but it might be back next month too. Definitely try to be here at least three visits though within the next couple months. Get your free express pass. And yeah, all this food smells delicious, but we're not doing food today. We're just gonna get a couple of rides of Mako. Battery's running low and space is running out on the GoPro. So I'm only gonna get like one POV or so. We'll see how many times we end up riding it. But we need to make sure we save enough space to finish this video. so we didn't lose it and basically you can actually visual, visualize the air time throughout the ride based on the movement of the bee really cool we're probably gonna be heading out of the park now um penguin exhibit right now you can only go through the exit of it and they have the main exhibit closed pretty soon the whole penguin area should be closing um in like mid-march so definitely see the penguins before you can't and um other than that that's pretty much it going around sea world today um, we were here the last few weeks as well doing a lot of 7C stuff and we'll be here a lot more We got more lanyard punches to use um, Yeah, I'll let you know if there's anything else on the way out Icebreaker looks short, so we're gonna hit, hit it on the way out. We're not gonna film it though. We did it a lot the last few times But yeah, I need this uh, go for the last the end of the video
Woo. Update, I did do icebreaker. The line took a little bit longer than expected, but behind me you can see the Mardi Gras area has really cool lighting. But yeah, that's pretty much the only other update I've seen on the way out, so now we're heading out of the park. So on the way to the park, there's one more update. The uh, pipeline train, the one we saw on display during the tour, looks to be now inside the station. We're gonna wait to show you guys one more time of that, what it actually looks like, because it's really far away right now. We're gonna show you once we get into the parking lot. Other than that, we are heading out of the park. I'll do my outro in the parking lot. As we pass by the station, they got a lot of air sounds going on. It could either be like some tools or they're moving the train around. I hear a lot of sounds going on in the station. I don't think they're gonna actually do any pull throughs. I think it's just, um, they just immediately test, but the maintenance barn has lights on tonight. I wonder if they're gonna put all the trains on the track by tomorrow. We won't be here tomorrow, but we will keep you posted if we find out. And um, yeah, they still have some trains in there. Only the lead car, I believe, is in the station. Let's go find out if it is there. But you can definitely see the train in the station now. It's pretty neat. So yeah, so it's a bit hard to see, but the trains are definitely in the station. I know we just showed you guys, but it's really exciting to see that they already move. And the brake run into the station. And then we do have trains in the maintenance barn, which is all lit up. And yeah, like I already said, I believe they're gonna move this thing into the station either, if not tonight, then probably tomorrow morning. It's gonna happen within the next few days. And if it does take a little longer than that, then it should maybe take about a week or so before they actually start like testing. And that's where the train ends for the first one. Right there, I don't even know if you can see my finger. That's where the new train starts. They definitely have two of them in here. Yeah, this thing looks amazing. I just don't see any employees on site, so I just don't think we're gonna have any overnight uh, movement with the trains. So yeah, probably soon though. I almost forgot to do the outro. I made it to the car. Um, basically, like I said earlier, I have been posting late. So if you want the most up-to-date information, you do want to follow the social media channels. Um, thank you so much SeaWorld for inviting us out to see the Pipeline Surf Coaster. As you can see, I have so much hype for this coaster. Like I cannot wait to ride it. Um, we have been covering construction updates and we've been following this thing since like the track arrived like across the street in the parking lot by the uh, Wawa and yeah it's just amazing to see this thing like trains in the track about to like test but yeah like I said about the social media follow me on uh, Instagram at Ethan Hershaft follow me on Instagram at Florida theme park picks and also on Twitter at Ethan Hershaft and on TikTok at Ethan Hershaft as well and yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you guys in the next one.